Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tutele. In studio with me, I'm joined by Sean Ashton and Henry Biddlecombe, both from Anchor Capital. Now today we're talking PayPal, an American company operating a worldwide online payment system offering electronic alternatives to traditional paper methods like checks and money orders. Good to have you both, gentlemen. PayPal, I think a lot of South Africans might be familiar with the name, but uh, still slowly being introduced to this kind of operating system. Uh, paint a picture for us as to uh, how it competes with its uh, peers in the industry, and if this is a threat to what, MasterCard and Visa? Go so, you know, Henry. PayPal was founded by a South African, Elon Musk, and they actually listed it, and then it was sold to, to eBay in 2002 for $1.5 billion. And at that stage, they were processing about $1.6 billion in transactions. Fast forward to last year, and it was actually carved out of eBay with a market cap of $46 billion. Um, and it was then processing $280 billion in transactions. So it, it's a company that's grown sure. massively. you know. And, and really, the, re the two reasons why it's exciting is that PayPal is looking to displace cash in our lives. So it's playing right into the cashless society theme. And secondly, um, they're looking to become a big player in, in what they call contextual commerce. What does that mean? So it's such an interesting concept and it's really going to change the way you and I shop. You know, we always talk about the new ways that we access information and even the new ways that advertisers look to reach us um, in context through our phones. So for example, if you're looking up um, an address on, on Google Maps for a hairdresser, you know, um, adverts will come up advertising certain hairdressers in, in the area. Mm -hmm. But PayPal are actually taking it one step further, where now you can book and pay for an appointment um, through that advert. And they're really looking to catch the buyer with what in what they call moments of high commercial intent. So when you're picking up your phone and you're looking for something, they can advertise products to you, and then PayPal will actually allow you to buy the product then and there, rather than having to surf to another website or go to a shop. Makes sense, capturing you in the moment when you are, are ready for that transaction. But it sounds to me like this needs a really developed uh, background IT system, uh, so it wouldn't necessarily work well in emerging markets. What's, what's, what are the dynamics there? Well, you know, it, it's, it's a business that's taken more than a decade to build, and there's been huge investment into, you know, both IT infrastructure and, and obviously regulatory compliance. And to that end, PayPal have made several strategic acquisitions to kind of build a full sort of solution in that space and um, the main ones to talk about are first of all Braintree mm -hmm. um, which is a mobile uh, payments processing company and really they've used that platform to develop the PayPal mobile application which you can use to pay for things through your phone for example in Woolworths in Australia right now you can actually pay at the till with PayPal you just tap your phone on the machine and pay for your groceries Sheesh. yes uh, some of the other acquisitions though Modest and Venmo Zoom uh, how do these all add to the uh, dynamics uh, that PayPal is looking to explore so Modest was one of the smaller acquisitions but it's one of the more exciting ones too because that's really your contextual commerce technology so for example um, when you're on Pinterest and you're looking at you know nice things whether it be shoes in your case or you know <laughs> cars in mine um, it'll give you the option to buy that pair of shoes right inside Pinterest you know so it's very interesting technology um, and then the other two worth mentioning are Venmo which is a sort of peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, lending and money transfer application within the States and then you've got Zoom which is an emerging markets oriented money transfer app Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at some of the metrics around the company now. Looking at the valuation, I commented off here that this does look uh, uh, very expensive at these levels, but I understand that you uh, also highlight that this is a highly cash generative company. Yeah, well, look, th they're growing earnings at around 15% per annum. So at the moment, it's trading on a forward P of about 20, 26. Mm. Over the next two years, we, we, we think that that'll unwind to around a 20 PE. But you have to take in, into consideration that they're sitting on about $6.5 billion in cash. So even once you, you take into account the tax that's payable on the, the, the foreign cash, that equates to about $4.50 per share. So that brings that forward PE down to 18. So at face value, the share looks expensive. But once you drill into the detail, it, it's n the multiple is not that demanding. Mm -hmm. Sean, do you? I think, I think the, mm -hmm. o the other thing to mention, you, made the, you, made a question, you had a question around, is this thing a threat to the credit card companies? Yes. Ultimately, they are utilizing credit cards as well. So when you talk about the, the payments ecosystem, if you, go in, if you go in and you register on PayPal, you would typically be utilizing either a bank account within PayPal, linked to a bank account. Only in the States currently you can't do that here. But in South Africa you can use your card. So ultimately that payment is still going to be pinged through to a, a Visa or a MasterCard or, or whatever the case may be. Mm. So yeah, all of, the, all of this ultimately means that a, the, the, end you, the, the, the end loser is cash, really. Mm.
So if then there's a win-win situation here, does this mean opportunities for growth are always increasing, increasing customer base, uh, given the investment that they've been making as well, uh, increasing to markets uh, where they've got the IT infrastructure and support? Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and you can see that in the transaction volume growth that they're achieving now. We're talking kind of north of 20% per annum. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, paint a picture for us as to what uh, future growth opportunities here, though. Uh, uh, Henry, how positive is it looking? So, you know, this is one of those great business models where scale begets scale. So the more customers they sign, the more appealing the platform becomes to merchants. And the more merchants that adopt PayPal as a payment platform, the more attractive it becomes to consumers because obviously mm -hmm. you can use it to pay in more places. Mm -hmm. So currently they've got about 185 million active customers and they've got about 14 million active merchants. So we think that growth will actually start to accelerate. And we think that the value of the transactions that they process will go from about $280 billion where it is now to about half a trillion dollars in just two years from now in 2018. Mm. I understand that in recent headlines as well there was a relationship that fell through with uh, mobile apps. How does that tie in? So th that was their Braintree acquisition mm -hmm. um, where basically what PayPal have done is they've released a mobile application. The interesting thing about their mobile app um, in contrast with competing solutions like, for example, Google Pay and Apple Pay, is that it's platform agnostic. So it doesn't matter whether you've got an Android phone or an iOS phone, whether you're using a tablet, a phone, or a PC, you can use your PayPal um, website or your PayPal app to make payments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sean, uh, give us your views with regard to uh, future growth opportunities. Yeah, I would think the U.S. and China will probably be good uh, growth opportunities and markets here. Yeah, is that what we're looking for from the leadership so of the company? So I think roughly half of their business is already outside of the U.S. So it's, uh, and I wouldn't even say that the U.S. is completely penetrated. I mean, when you look at global kind of online payments, uh, uh, you know, in terms of size, you're talking north of a trillion dollars in size. So they're sure. kind of 280 billion of that. So I think there's significant potential for growth. Uh, just in terms of capturing more online spend, but also a migration away from, from cash itself. Mm -hmm. um, but remembering it's not to say that the, that the rest of the world is completely unpenetrated. Half of their business is, is outside the States. But, but I think this is a, a long-term thesis of market share gains within the online space and, 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 and versus cash as a payment mechanism everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. To close off with, though, before we get to buy, hold, sell, are we liking their strategy where they're deploying capital out there, uh, uh, getting more acquisitions on board in order to bulk up uh, the company's uh, possibilities? You know, Gugu, so from a technology point of view, this company is cutting edge. And I think that over time, and we'll talk about it in the buy, hold or sell argument, this is going to become an asset in play. I think the company would be very attractive for a larger operator who are looking to be able to offer a cutting edge experience to a, to a consumer in the e-payment space. You don't think they can go it alone? Uh, I, they could. They could. So I, don't, I certainly don't think that management would ever accept anything less than a very attractive offer for their shares. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's get into that argument right now and perhaps get your views on buy, hold or sell PayPal as a stock. Let's get your view, Henry. Buy, hold or sell PayPal? So for me, it's a buy. The stock's currently trading at $38. And you know, we've already spoken about the Ford multiple. And once you strip out the cash, by 2018, you know, it's growing its earnings at around 15% per annum, that forward multiple winds down to about an 18. But what we haven't spoken about yet specifically are their cash, uh, cash flow generation abilities. Now for every dollar in revenue, they're generating about 20 cents in, in cash. So if you apply a discounted cash flow valuation to the business, you end up with, 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 with a much higher price than where it is today of around $55. Mm. Um, you know, and I don't think the market's giving them full recognition for that. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly for me, the, the, the stock offers value at this point. Mm -hmm. Sean? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say that it's cheap, anything trading at north of a 20 PE. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also hard for us to find businesses growing at 15% with the kind of structural tailwinds that this company would have trading at those types of multiples, often you've got to pay a lot more. Um, so so I, th I think it's a buy. I think if, you've got a, if you want to think about potential risks, I would say that about a quarter of their revenue uh, relates to payments on, on the eBay platform. Um, and, they, and eBay as a business model is certainly coming under attack from, from Amazon. Mm. So th there is some slowdown in revenue that, that eBay itself is experiencing, which obviously feeds through into um, in, into the, the PayPal business and we've just got to watch that quite carefully. But I think it's, it's small enough in the overall mix not to derail the overall growth story. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll leave it there for today, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your analysis on PayPal. I take it if uh, this had to be included in the favorite, what, FANG stocks? 
would I have to change it to what? FANGPA? <laughs> Not too sure if it would work, but would it apply? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, gentlemen, giving us a buy recommendation there on a rather expensive PayPal. But uh, again, get in now uh, as the growth opportunities are clearly uh, uh, increasing for PayPal. But a big thank you once more to both Sean Ashton and Henry Biddlecombe, both from Anchor Capital. Join us again next time where we talk more stocks.